I walked up to Thermal Rights booth at Comedy 2025 and they handed me this. This this is all the stuff I need to memorize for this video. I'm gonna do my best. So this is all the air coolers. There's a fan with 17 blades that's completely made out of metal. It's got a zinc alloy frame and aluminum blade set. Uh, we'll talk about that too. And then we'll swing around here. We'll just do the whole booth really quickly because I need, I need you all to understand how actually impossible it is for me to remember all the stuff. So we'll give you the flyover. We'll talk about it more later. This is liquid cooler land. I've learned about one of them in the time we've had here. So we'll talk about that as well. And then on the other side of the booth, uh, that is a VR or a Ram cooler right there. This took them three months to make and is just for fun. It was basically, so Thermal Ray has its own factory. They wanted to build something cool. They said it was like 400 and something pieces, 450, I think. And then there's also new cases, which this is brand new for Thermal Ray. So. Thermal Wright has not done computer cases before. Uh, this is one of the few things that they're not making in their own factory. And uh, we'll talk about this too because it's a brand new venture for them. So I think we start with the fan and the air coolers. That's what they're best known for. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Thermaltake TR100 Portable Mini ITX Case. The TR100 case has a mesh ventilated front panel, heavily perforated side and top panels, and claims to support up to 280mm liquid coolers and large GPUs up to 360mm long and 70mm thick. It even has an optional suitcase with cutouts for the system, a mouse, keyboard, and monitor for transport. The Thermaltake TR100 Mini ITX case targets portable, smaller form factor PC building while maintaining compatibility for relatively large components. Learn more at the link in the description below. We're gonna pick three. That's what I can do here. Uh, so this is the Frost Tower. We'll do the names first. This is the Royal Lord. And then this is an updated PA140. The biggest thing that Thermal Wright is doing is mostly digital displays and screens on the coolers. There's a couple that don't have them. Uh, but one of the questions I was asking repeatedly was just like, what's the best value? What's the most competitive? Because Thermal Wright's mostly known for just killing people on price. Where every company that we've spoken to that makes coolers here at Computex, all of them are struggling to compete with Thermal Wright specifically on price. And uh, that seems to be where they're doing the best. So for the Frost Tower, this has a 140 in the middle. It's running a 120 front fan. Price is supposed to be about $50 US. The middle fan, this is a 27 millimeter thick fan. And then the front is a standard 25. They're using LCP blades for the actual blade of the fan, which LCP is very expensive. And then uh, they're using a 30% fiberglass reinforced PPT for the frame, which is one of the, it's, it's a balancing mechanism for cost. So you do all LCP, which lets you get the closest tip clearance, or you can mix and match some PPT with fiberglass reinforcement. The fiberglass retains some of the rigidity of the, the frame in this case, so that it can keep the distance so they don't clip each other. So that's why they do that. Uh, and then going no LCP for the, the frame will help save on cost. It is a six pole fan uh, and then the fin stack is soldered. So that's kind of one of the bigger things that can be done for cooler quality as it goes up the stack is soldering rather than a press fit is the alternative. There's a little bit of a benefit. We don't have a, a breakout like standalone test for it. So anyway, that's gonna be a $50 cooler. That's probably the most interesting for us, a dual fan cooler to test. And then uh, I did ask about the PA120. So they wanna do an update to add the digital and LCD variants of the PA120. It sounds like there's gonna be some, uh, some changes and, and new ones there. And then for the rest of these, uh, most of the changes come down to the, um, the fans. And so Thermal White's got a ton of new fans they're experimenting with, like over here. So these are uh, in the R series, they're calling it. So they have an R5 and R9 fans, where the number is the amount of blades. Um, so they're saying R5, they're designing for uh, pushing air through radiators. The R9 fans are going for a nine blade. This one is a 28 millimeter thick fan. Uh, and then like a lot of the others, kind of mixing and matching where they're moving towards the higher quality materials like LCP on a lot of stuff. Uh, and then like metal. So this one, the X12 is a pure prototype. This was a $100 cost to make. So this is fully CNC. It cost them 100 bucks just to make it. it. Tells you about what the retail would be if they could make it uh, and if they could mass produce it. A couple things with fans like this. So first of all, 17 blades, very abnormal. Um, the uh, thermal right saying this would be most useful in a mini pc solution which they have here as well and we'll look at briefly and uh, otherwise using all metal is just to get that blade tip clearance to basically i mean functionally zero it is that is very close it's got the inner ring to it as well uh, this hub design 
So having all those pieces helps to break up some of the airflow across the hub, which should improve the pressure across the inner wall of the hub and next to the blades. That's why they would do that. Um, that's pretty much all we have on that fan. Going over the Royal Lord, so uh, this cooler, this is supposed to be about a $43 cooler. It's dual fan. They say it's an extra $10 if you add an LCD to it. Um, and then it is also soldered, and this one is seven heat pipes uh, with a 30% fiberglass reinforced PPT for the fan, and then uh, and they're both two by 25 millimeter fans. So that is that'll cover the coolers, I think. All right, so for coolers, liquid coolers, I'm only going to talk about one today. Uh, this is the Stream Vision, so it's supposed to be a hundred dollar US cooler, and they're basically just mounting a cover plate to it it's got a screen on it and then there's a fan for cooling the memory so that'll shoot out to the side hit the memory but also the vrm uh one of my suggestions was just angling the the grill here on the side on all these sides actually to project it out in a way from the mechanical support for like that actually mounts to cool the mounting bracket but otherwise uh they're just trying to compete in the liquid cooler market more and one of the other things that thermal right had here we'll go over to their cases so the coolers they're starting to also compete i guess with trikes trikes's whole big thing is the panoramic cooler and uh thermal Roy wants to do that for cheap so they've got uh, i i will say i probably would have chosen a different clip that is not the most impressive animation i've ever seen but they're calling them the rainbow vision and wonder vision so the screen is interchangeable these can be swapped between the two of them uh and this one is a full separate cold plate so we've just got that screen on there for now they're 2400 by 1800 from what i was told a 60 hertz display and then um it is an oled for at least for this one so that's a 6.67 inch oled they were saying should be about 200 dollars for both let's focus on the case though so thermal rights plan for the cases is, is to do what they're doing to the cooler industry which is i guess make everyone panic about the price uh the cheapest version of the case will be 45 dollars. the more expensive one will be 65 dollars, and the difference is on the more expensive one, they're including this LCD on the side. On the cheaper one, it's going to be a plate. It'll be a steel plate probably. Uh, and then on the front here, there's a digital display. So it's basically two displays of different types. Digital displays just give you numbers. And otherwise, it's mostly steels with a, just a bunch of perforations in it for the top, the glass for the sides. This is not aluminum, so it's just a, it's a plastic. They just tried to make it look like a brushed aluminum, uh, but it is not. And then for the case itself, so. It's an MATX case. There's a good amount of kill management depth here. Uh, it's not like fully BTF or anything, so it's a more standard case. Pass-throughs for the cables are on the side and on the top for EPS 12 volt, and everything else is pretty standard. I mean, even just like looking down at the bottom, so they've perforated the top and bottom of the power, the uh, hard drive cages, which is a good thing to see. Perforated the top of the power supply shroud, and then also, of course, the bottom of the case. So it is, I mean, there's about as many holes as you can get in a case in this case as possible. Uh, it's called the TRM-10, and uh, like I said, there's just gonna be two versions of it. So I guess they're going for airflow in terms of the panel design with the exception of the front, uh, and then the side makes up for the rest of the airflow. So uh, with, I guess, the, the steel in the middle there adding some rigidity, but also probably a play on Thermal Rights logo. So, I think that covers most of these. Let's do the mini PCs briefly. So for mini PCs, Thermalrite is, they're trying to compete with minis for them. I mean, they're taking the, the Thermalrite model for coolers and they're applying it to mini PCs. I asked what the price was. We don't have prices yet. What I have is these are liquid cooled and then they are going to be cheaper than or equal to competing minis, mini PCs, which I took to mean minis for them. So supposed to be Basically, better thermals should be a little quieter if it's done properly for the liquid cooling. Depends on how the fan is mounted. Uh, this can fit a 140 millimeter radiator, for example. And currently, this one's running a benchmark. So there's actually a screen a readout here where it is uh, 61 degrees Celsius, 100% load. And this is running a 395 AMD SOC. Uh, it just started the test, so that's going to keep climbing. I don't know what it'll get to. We don't have the time to wait for steady state here. But they've got three models, basically. So this is a smaller one. Uh, and then this is a wider one. I don't have a ton of detail yet. We've asked to take them apart, maybe in the future. And um, otherwise, the, the big takeaway, I guess, that we'll check back in on once they're ready to be tested is just does it compete directly with Minis Forum at the price? It seems like Minis Forum has been like a thermal right of its own in the mini PC pre-built space. So they're gonna get some competition now. This is just for show. So this is fully CNC'd. It looks super nice. It's really well done. 
uh, but it is not something that they are planning to sell necessarily unless there's a ton of demand for it. But, I mean, even you look at like the bolts going through it and they've got the red accents on that too. The fans got the red accents. Like this is beautifully done. Uh, unfortunately, it is not currently planned to be for sale. And, uh, and then you can even see, I don't know if that's a real copper, copper you know, plating on aluminum, but either way, it looks nice. Uh, this is not the same spec as any of the other PCs on the table. They're just saying if there's a lot of feedback where people want some of these frame cases, which they also have for ATX and MATX on the other side, then uh, maybe they'll consider it, but otherwise it is for the showcase. So I think that covers about everything I can fit in this amount of time. The, there's an impossible amount of air coolers. Like, I, it would take me a couple more hours to memorize all the detail on the air coolers. And uh, so we'll just have to check in with those as they come out. But now we're going to jump over to a brief interview with the CEO where the questions I want to ask are, how can, how can things you make be so cheap? Why do you make so many things? And I guess what's the strategy? So we'll cut to that and then we'll be done. Okay, so now we are joined by Jason, who's going to be translating some of this, and by Lee, the CEO. And uh, the first question is, why so many products? You know, why so many? You have so many companies. Why so many signals? Uh, because our factories are getting set a target for our factories. They have to come out with uh, three to five new models each month. Is it your own factory? It's our own factory. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Is that how you're able to get the pricing as low? Because every company I talk to, soyo chita da gongsi, tang dao shuo thermal right the jia ge tai pian yi le. Is that what that? Because we are a company together. Because rather than other than the raw materials, all the fans, all the heat pipes, the heat sink, radiators, we own all the factories, so we could make the price very competitive. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is what's the general strategy for thermal right so when thermal right kind of recently thermal right got very popular yeah. with the pa120 pa er lane and so after that it seemed like you guys had a, a lot of recognition uh what has the strategy been competing with other cooler companies uh, Oh, performance is good and the price is low. <laughs> is that it? That's the whole strategy? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what about um tooling? Do you do you make all your own tooling or you use other factories? We use our own tooling for the manufacturer. We use our own tooling. Yeah. Okay. We have all our own tooling. Okay. Uh is there who's who's the number one competitor that you're focusing on? Our最大的竞争对手是谁？嗯，只有自己了。要熬熬熬self。Okay，all I think that'll cover it. So uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Yeah. And we will see you all next time.